Welcome two days of Eurosonic Noorderslag uh, in uh, Groningen and two days of uh, Buma Music Meets Tech. Another uh, guest. Hi, uh, who are you and what do you do? Hi, my name is Robert Baruch. I'm the manager of public affairs for Buma Stemra. Uh, I'm responsible for maintaining and influencing the public uh, relations, sorry, the, the political relations. Uh, for uh, Buma and the uh, creative sector. Yeah. And in, in, in your field of expertise, what is the most important thing, the most important uh, trend happening right now? The most important trend happening right now is that the European Commission uh, has presented a, uh, a strategy on the development of the internal single uh, digital market. And, what we, and we see this as an opportunity to modernize uh, a copyright in such a way that it is beneficial again for European creators. What happens now is that never in history so much money has been spent on creativity um, in Europe, but never in history so little was earned by creators. And that is because uh, most of the money uh, goes to tech companies, goes to Facebook, to Google, to SoundCloud, who benefit from this, uh, from this money, and the, the creators don't see a cent. I always thought uh, YouTube is, is, is paying for, uh, for, for, for music, etc. Is that not the case? YouTube, YouTube is, is paying partially, but as far as user-generated content is concerned, uh, due to a loophole in European legislation, they don't have to pay. Uh, what happened is the following. In 1995, a manager of a German um, uh, internet company was sent to prison because child porn was found on one of his servers. And from that, a huge debate arose, who is responsible for the content uh, that is being stored on servers? And in European legislation, there is an exception in the copyright where it says, if you're only transmitting this information, so if someone else is putting it on and still someone else is taking it off the internet, you are not responsible and you are not liable. So user-generated platforms, user-generated content platforms that did not exist in that time are benefiting tremendously from this emptiness, this loophole, this, this uh, safe harbor in the, in the uh, European legislation. Because what they say is, well, this person put this music on, uh, on Facebook, for instance, another person is looking at it. Our role is only to transmit it from A to B. So we're not uh, we're not liable what we're saying is listen you are making a lot of money thanks to this creative content there are more than 1 billion users of facebook every month and the majority of them consume cultural co uh, cultural content my children uh, only see their clips and their and listen to their music through facebook and uh, and and soundcloud so the in the industry is losing money uh, uh, on that, and that is something that needs to be repaired. Yeah. So, um, uh, so the good thing is that there's a lot of money going uh, uh, going around, and the bad thing is it's not going to the right people. It's not going to the right people. It's not going to the creators. It's not going to the artists, and it's not even staying in Europe. It's uh, being exported to uh, the United States. Yeah. Uh, um, so you're talking to uh, to Facebook, for um, uh, for, uh, for instance, and like you say, they. No, we're not. We're not talking to Facebook. This is Facebook is only using the existing legislation. I would, if I would, be Facebook as well. No, we're talking to the European Commission, and we're talking to members of the Parliament, and we're talking to all the 28 governments uh, in the uh, in the European Union, yeah. and explaining them that it is the in the interest of the European creative industry that the money goes to the creators and that the money is, is used, the revenues are being used to, to enhance European culture. Um, so it's, it's, it, the problem is not with the, with the services. The problem with, is with legislation that, in, in our view, is outdated. Yeah. But, okay, maybe I'm a little bit uh, naive, but I, was, when, when I, I would be making so much money um, uh, and, and being Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, uh, I, would, uh, I, I would follow your story and say, well, maybe there's some point in it and not, uh, and, and not make it a legal thing, but maybe I'm naive, and that's why I'm my, maybe I'm not Mark Zuckerberg. Um, I don't know why you're not Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think it is in the interest of Mark Zuckerberg as well to have a sustainable model, because when you when when you invest in culture, when you invest in music, people that have wild ideas that might be not commercially interesting in a in a, in a short period of time um, will con will be able to continue to invest in their knowledge and their and their network. Um, if if only the big names can 
can uh, create an income by, uh, by shows, it is detrimental to cultural diversity. So we need this sustainable model. And at this moment, uh, the money is being squeezed out of, of, the, of, the, of the cultural ecosystem. Yeah. So, and how successful are you in getting this story uh, across to the people who can make the, the difference? Well, we're rather successful. We have a number of uh, members of the European Parliament here at the conference, and, what, uh, and they are part of panels. Uh, they have introduction with, uh, with creators. Uh, yesterday we had a very important uh, visit. The first vice president of the European Commission, Mr. Frans Timmermans, was here, who had an excellent story about uh, his involvement in music. And by, by being here and by speaking to members of the creative community, he gets a better understanding of how this sector is working and, 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 what the, and how people look at it and what the importance is. We had uh, Minister Jet Bussemaker of Education, Science and Culture uh, here. And we have a lot of officer, official, officials and officers from various um, uh, European countries. As you know, the Netherlands are now chairing the European Union. Uh, so we took the opportunity to invite uh, senior members of the staffs of ministers of culture from all over Europe. They're all here. They're being introduced to members of the creative community. And this way, the knowledge is being spread. Yeah. So yeah. it's... Uh, I think yeah, we're, you're, you're optimistic. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm quite... Uh, well... You know, in in the end, we have to look at the results. But yeah. I'm optimistic with what we could achieve, and how people are interested, at least, to hear the stories. Yeah. Now it's politics, so anything can happen. Uh, but at least we are better and better in making our so in making our sound being heard. But we do need members of the creative community themselves, creators, writers, lyricists, producers, publishers, artists to explain themselves to politicians and, um, and administrators how the market works and, and how the monetizing is important for their living. Yeah, hey, hey, the, 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 the problem with uh, laws and regulations, or maybe it's not a problem, but it's, it, it is the way it works, it always follows. Uh, and maybe that, and that is a good thing, that is for a reason as well. But um, is that becoming more and more a problem in a world that changes, seem to change more fast than, uh, than in the past? Well, uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it because otherwise I would be without a job. So I'm dependent on this. Uh, yeah. Um, and you know, it's 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 a long story. A hundred years ago, uh, music radio stations uh, needed to be licensed, according to the collective management societies then. And uh, uh, they said, "You're making music available to uh, to an audience, so you need to be licensed." And the mu the radio stations replied by saying, "No, listen, we're not transmitting music. We're transmitting radio waves. Second, we're not to doing that to the public." Uh, because people are listening to this music in the privacy of their own uh, houses, and thirdly, we're making, we're doing advertising for the music sector, so you should be happy with us. Yeah. Now, this story sounds very familiar, uh, and we had this, we had the same debate uh, with the vinyl when vinyl was uh, was invented, uh, with a CD, with a cassette, uh, and now on the internet, it does go very fast, and it is very complicated, and we have very big, I wouldn't call them enemies, but opponents who rightfully or understandably defend their own interest. Yeah. Uh, Google has a lot of lobbying and bargaining uh, uh, power. Uh, so it is, it, is an interesting, it is an interesting fight. Yeah. Um, if, you, if, I, if I ask you and you, 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 you walk around over here, because a couple of years ago I remember I hardly, uh, st I almost stopped uh, going here because it was, to me, it was the event of pessimism and complaining. And is it different now? Oh, absolutely. First of all, I don't recognize what you're saying a few, a few years ago. Eurosonic Norderslag is all about talent development. It's all about people that want to take a next step in their career, be it in inspiration, be it in network, being on the threshold of stardom as the winners of the uh, of the uh, ebbas are it's highly inspirational there's a lot of positive energy of course people are concerned but this is a general tendency all over europe people in general are uh, are concerned but this festival this conference is all about optimism and it's all about improvement and it's all about um, yeah. uh, getting a next step yeah yeah i was more uh, referring to the um, the industry bit than to the musical bits because because okay. i always say i'm never um, 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 Pessimistic about music because music will always be uh, uh, be made and people will always uh, well love music. Hey, is there is is there still a, a bit of the the music world 
um, that needs disruption. The music world is disruption. Uh, and there's never enough uh, uh, disruption. But what we what we really need is that that it's 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 also a logical life cycle sequence. Um, a musician start from their first passion, which is music, which is the magic of a guitar, of of a piano, or of the of the of the sp of the word becoming music. That's the first, and people stay close to that passion. But if you want to be part of the bigger world, if you want to sell, you have to, and if you want to be involved in the world, you have to be interested in what's ha what's happening in terms of. Uh, your legal position and how are you going to live of it because playing the guitar or writing music is amazing but you know people need bread as well yeah. uh, and I really hope that people will stand up for themselves and be involved in the in the debate and interface with politicians and legislators stand up for their rights and 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 be involved yeah. hey um, like you said we well, we started with just making music, and then then the final came, and then the CD came. Now we, uh, the downloads came, and yeah. now we're in the in the streaming um, uh, phase. Uh, what's next? Next is the Internet of Things. Uh, music will be in your glasses, in your earring, in your wig. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where. Uh, we're going to be. We're going to have music everywhere and everywhere, which is amazing. Which is which is an amazing experience because. Music moves, you know that as, uh, as, as, as no one else. Uh, but the question is, if you want music to be sustainable, if we want good music to be produced in 10, 20, 50 years from now, we need a sustainable model. We need to organize the market in such a way that also the niche writers, the niche promoters, the niche artists can potentially um, uh, earn a living with the work that they do, because otherwise, logically, they can only do it in the evening hours when they have finished giving music classes to yeah. spoiled children on schools or whatever. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, in, in a world of um, uh, uh, abundance, where music is, uh, all the music is, uh, is, is available, and like you say, we go into a future where music is everywhere, does music become more or less valuable? That is, um, I think there is more differentiation in uh, in music. There, uh, when I when I look at my own uh, at how I consume music, I use music as background when I work. I put on a Spotify sp a playlist, usually something classical, um, uh, and I have it as as a background. And I don't really pay attention to the type of uh, uh, to what is to what is being played, what performers it is. Uh, who the singers are when it's uh, when it's opera, but when I come back from a strenuous uh, meeting, and I have to listen to "Nothing Else Matters" by Metallica, and have to turn it up loud. Fortunately, I'm now uh, uh, it's now possible for me to find it within seconds and to put it over my car speakers extremely loud, yeah. uh, and then it becomes value. So there is. I don't think there's there's one's answer to it. There's will be more diversity. Some music will be more background and will be more a commodity and will be more music for the masses. But because it, it becomes so available, um, good quality uh, uh, music on the time and the place and the way that you want it, I'm sure that people will will want to pay for it. Uh, I, I love to pay for uh, for music because it gives gives me so much um, uh, uh, back in uh, in my life and uh, life and has been uh, doing so. So uh, thanks a lot and uh, welcome. See you next time. See you next time. Uh, bye bye. Thanks for watching. Now we'll be here for uh, two days doing interviews. Tomorrow there will be a lot of pitches and other stuff of startups. And uh, you know you can uh, watch all the videos on fastmovingtargets.nl and on our uh, YouTube uh, video account. So um, thanks a lot. See you later.